Right, this is Zion. Zion is an American Israeli. His family made Aliyah when he was eight. He's a wee bit more than eight now. Um, and he married um, a woman a number of years ago, had three children and raised them in the States. Um, and as uh, he will tell you, his uh, then wife um, decided that uh, drugs were more important than her children. So she relinquished all custody, gave it full custody to you, and you raised them for all those years with no interference from anybody in the States, no welfare, no nothing. So I think I've got that right, yeah? Uh, you then decided why not come to Israel and get some roots again and a bit of Hebrew for the kids and blah blah blah. And you arrived in August 2014. Yeah. Oh my goodness me, Tion. Um, <coughs> Well, you got your roots. What happened to your children? Where are your children right now? Well, right now, um, well, I have three. Uh, mm -hmm. my, my eldest lives with me right now. He's uh, visiting the States, but the uh, two children right now, 13 and 12, are in institutions of the social services of the state of Israel. Your American-born children. I, these are American-born children. Well. And they were taken on a false claim, a woman you know. Yeah, uh, when I came back, uh, I came back to Israel um, after 10 years of absence. I had left with one child, I came back with three by myself. Um, I landed the, eight, the 15th of August 2014. And uh, uh, nine months later? Nine months later, my children were taken away by social services after a lady friend that I uh, came in contact with who I had known 30 years before. You basically rejected her and found I yeah? basically, we, you know, it started off as a friendship and she took a like to my children, she liked me, and uh, she wanted a relationship that I couldn't give her, that I wasn't interested in, and at the time I was still married. And uh, in fact, and interesting enough, she was religious, I am not religious. So the long and short of it, from the she, start yeah. of that, she made a false claim. She basically went to the social services and uh, said that I uh, mistreat my children, that I starve them and I uh, keep them locked inside, even though they were going to school and they were taken from their school. Uh, said that I didn't have books and I was... Uh, a, a whole lot of... Uh, yeah, it's just, I, I, I'll never know exactly what she said. Uh, because they don't show me, it's all so professional. No, they never went to your house. Never. Social they service. never checked your house. They never checked how the children no, were being raised. No. They literally came to school. Came to the kids' school and, and took, took them, them away. And uh, took them to the furthest part of Israel. And uh, that's when the, the little uh, program started against me. Last year and a half, I have uh, I barely seen them. I, I Just a few months ago, when one of my children was finally moved out of uh, Schustermann, uh, institution which is in uh, Lynn Schusterman's institution yes, as we'll just make that clear. Well, finally I had visitations with him 45 minutes once a week under supervision. Uh, he's trying to come home, he's asking to come home and they tell him but your father is a bad guy so you can't come home. <laughs> I've seen a telephone uh, transcription of, from your boy where he's saying that the he's literally heard social workers planning to put you in prison, yeah. they're making plans to uh, lie yeah. and they're yeah. trying to put things into his head that he knows aren't true and he's told you, Dad, I want to leave, uh, I want to get away and that you need to get away and he's listening to it all, he's 13. Um, what does it make you feel like when you hear your, your boy's in prison here and he's listening to them trying to plot the end of you? Well, it's a, it's a totally helpless feeling. Um, I'm supposed to be the, uh, you know, the big strong dad that is supposed to be able to protect and save my children. Uh, in essence, my hands are tied. Um, if I so much as look uh, crooked at a social worker or do anything out of order, I can't raise my hands, I can't raise my voice. I do everything that I can legally, but um, my children are taught and told that I'm not fighting for them, that I don't want them to come home. Uh, that's what they do with my daughter. My son is beginning to wake up and he realizes this is not true. And when he asks to come home, they tell him, um, you can't, but your father did this and that. He says, but that's not true. And you guys are lying. And I want to tell the judge that you're lying. And, and then he hears them plot. A Jewish boy denied a bar mitzvah as a punishment, uh, over, either yeah. inside the institution or outside with you. This is a Jewish country. You brought him home for Jewish mm -hmm roots. His bar mitzvah's got to be the most critical yeah. time so in his young life. Weeks ago he became uh, bar mitzvah, the age of, the age of, of, of mitzvot. 
And uh, I went before a judge and she said, no, it's too dangerous. He cannot come home. He cannot leave the institution. You may not make him any ceremony there or otherwise. And uh, that's it. The answer was no. And no birthday either. And no birthday. In fact, even on the day of his date of his bar mitzvah, I asked if I could, uh, if he could call and I could wish him, you know, a happy bar mitzvah, a happy birthday. Uh, instead, I got a text from the head of his institution saying, uh, please don't call, you're threatening me and you're bothering me. That was to asking my child to call. So Now, I've been with you th today, and we know, because we've had three or four phone calls, you are being so lied to. <laughs> uh, your son was allegedly taken to hospital at 2 o'clock, then 3 o'clock, then 4 o'clock, then 4.30. Nothing. It's all lies. And they've lied to you. The hospital's lied, the institution's lied. I've been listening to it, and I'll write about it. Um, what are you going to do? How are you going to rescue these children? Well, I'm going to continue what I have been doing for the last year and a half since they were taken. I continue to go to every hearing. I continue to appeal. I'll do everything legally in my power to defend them. And I'll walk the thin line of, of whatever, whatever I need to do. I can't get myself in any kind of trouble. I can't attack these people verbally or physically. But I can try to research as much as possible what I can do legally throughout the world for these children. What do you tell people in America now? You're sitting here, you've lived a lot in America. Mm -hmm. uh, people love this country, um, and, and no one says you don't. But what are you going to tell these people out there about what's really going on in here? Well, I would tell them the truth. Mm -hmm. uh, if I could stand at every airport with signs not to get on the planes to come here, I would not suggest for anybody to come here not for a visit, not to make Aliyah. This is not the Jewish country that is spoken of. Everybody is being lied to, and it reminds me of the story of Pinocchio going to La La Land, where everything is good, and at the end, everybody's just turning into a donkey. There is nothing here but death, destruction, and children being taken away. There are no human rights for Jewish Israelis in the land of Israel. There are not. It's been funded by many of your compatriots. Um, for the benefit of children, lots of the institutions have been funded to billions of dollars, the ones your kids are in actually, yes, for abandoned children, um, beaten children, Jewish men are beating them all. Um, how do we wake these people up to the fact that's not true? Well, uh, I personally, if I could, I would knock on every door of the people that donate to these, to these uh, Nazi, uh, Nazi Jewish institutions. And, I would ask, and I, they, they should follow their money. They should know where their money is going to and what they're contributing to the continuation of a, of a Jewish Holocaust in the land of Israel by the Jews. These people should not be giving money to, to, to institutions that do these things. There is a, uh, there's a lack of human rights. Children are, are, are suffering. Parents are suffering. Uh, this money is being given to places which don't deserve it. They should not be funded. You don't feel very well today, do you? <laughs> I know that. I saw you the other day and I know you're not feeling very well today. You're worried about the children, you're worried about your daughter, she's not been eating. I understand that. the hospital for the, for the sixth time in the last year and a half. And I understand she's in Etanim, which is a place I've been to, uh, not personally. Um, and I know how cruel that place is. And I know that they do enforce drugs and medication, whether you like it or not. She's on three different medications. This is her fourth visit in Etanim. In fact, they are releasing her in a few days, sending her back to where she's physically and emotionally being abused. And the only reason why she was put in this time was because she has been running home every day to see daddy. So her punishment is to be, to be locked in a mental institution and drugged? And the father cannot, I cannot come within five kilometers of any place that she's at. Judge ordered. There are no words for this, do you know that? I'm so shocked. Um, gonna make me cry <laughs> you actually could make me cry because I've never ever seen or heard anything like um, what they're doing to you and your children for someone who came back and so loyal to the country um, you'll be accused of being a self-hating Jew what do you say no such thing in my book I, I have always been loyal to my people to my land and to the world uh, wherever I've gone I've always been loyal and done my best um, I, I'm definitely not the enemy of any state, at least not in my own right. I've, I've done nothing, and um, I, I, I would not accept anybody telling me that I'm a self-hating Jew. I think that 
uh, the state of Israel uh, is accused, rightly so, of, of crimes against humanity, against religious rights. And therefore, there's, there's nothing self-hating. The truth has to be told. The truth is part of the Bible. Thou and shalt it, not bear false witness. So therefore, if, if my testimony, and I am willing to do so in front of the whole world, if it will save one child, that is part of the Bible as well. So no self-hating here. It is indeed. And there's over half a million shekel profit already made on your children at least. Yes, ma'am. Half a million, which could have gone to you. <laughs> not that you needed it, by the way. Right. The children um, were not taken away from me for... Well, we don't it know It wasn't why. one of the things that, that I was accused of. But <laughs> um, we're gonna, <coughs> you and I are going to be talking a lot more and people are going to know.